Good morning to the Honorable Council of Ministers, members of the media, radio listeners, online viewers, and St. Martin Gov Radio 107.9 FM. I'm Rolaika Roach, and welcome to the live Council of Ministers press briefing for today, Wednesday, February 28, 2018. The Minister of Public Housing, Spatial Planning, Environment, and Infrastructure, the Honorable Miklos Heatherson, and the Minister of Finance, the Honorable Michael Ferrier, will not be making any opening statements, but are both here to answer any questions the media may have. At this time, I invite the Minister of Justice and the Acting Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport, and Telecommunication, the Honorable Cornelius De Weaver, to address you. Good morning. Thank you very much, Ms. Roach. Madam Prime Minister and fellow colleague ministers, good morning, St. Martin. I want to begin by, first of all, thanking all participants, such as the Census Office, the main voting road, the polling station workers, and last but not least, the police officers and the vacant officers for assisting and keeping the peace in our community on Election Day. And of course, I have to thank the voters that came out and took advantage of their democratic right to cast their vote. Overall, during the day, we made our rounds with them as well and made sure that everything was in place. I want to thank, the, again, the police officers, Mr. Cal John, and using the dry book that they have for maintaining such order in the place. Thank you very much. The Heineken Regatta is going to begin this weekend, and I'm, not only will I be um, encouraging everyone to come out and participate and look at it. I will also be racing on one of the boats with Mr. Bobby Velasquez, so I'm looking forward to Friday being on one of them and enjoying the race from a um, participant's perspective. The, I also would like to mention and apologize a little bit for the traffic congestion being caused in Point Blanche with the construction on the road. I know some of the media houses have been personally affected by it. We apologize for that as well. But, you know, things have to happen and the sewage lines have to go in, the water lines have to go in. Um, some of the planning has been, of course, not in the, um, the right time, but we still have to work with it. The police department is definitely participating and helping to alleviate the situation. In my discussion with Mr. Howe this morning, it was also mentioned that they were willing to provide escort services to the tour operators to make sure that all the tours got out in time, and then they would also provide escort into the um, back into the harbor to make sure that the visitors are not affected by it. So we're asking everyone to please be patient. We've also asked the heavy containers, um, the t heavy transport drivers to also put their empty containers on the ring road during the day, and at night they can move them back into the harbor area. So we're again asking everybody to please be patient, and we are definitely meeting with all stakeholders to ensure that this is a smooth transition. Um, I'd like to implore on the drivers themselves that when the light is red, um, especially in the evening, that you abide by that law as well, because many times they still try to come through and then it creates a bottleneck that's already small enough and then it makes even more congestion and then it also does damage to the sidewalks and the plants on it as well. So please be considerate and wait in line and we will try and remedy this situation as quick as we can. There's the upcoming Sea Trade meeting and as well as meetings with the FCCA that will, we'll be traveling on Saturday to attend that. Again, joint promotional opportunities with FCCA are going to be explored. Um, the also the shore excursions give them an update on St. Martin and our progress. And of course, again, we have to make sure and let everyone know that St. Martin is open for business. Uh, during my meeting with the CHTA in Puerto Rico, we also touched base on the tourism e-learning workbooks. And these are for elementary schools. It's a tourism-based program for children between the ages of 6 to 11. This program will introduce our youngsters to tourism through exciting learning materials such as videos and fun ex exercises. 
Of course, many times I think people take tourism for granted. I think it's, in, it's important that we start to change that mindset and what better place to begin than with our young children and our young students and that they understand the importance of tourism as they grow older so that it will be ingrained in them um, and we don't have to you know, try to teach them anything different. So uh, we're going to purchase a few of them. We're going to meet with our colleague, Minister, and the ministry as well to go through the material, make sure that it's in line with what we would like the message to be. And then after that, hopefully coming for the upcoming school year that it will be introduced. I believe it's important. And I look forward to, of course, the cooperation, because understanding how government works is not that tourism forces anything. I believe ministries have to understand the importance of working together, and that's the way St. Martin will progress, especially during this time of recovery. Those are my comments for today. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Minister DeWeaver, for your opening remarks. At this time, I invite the Minister of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sport, the Honorable Yorin Weiser, to address you. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Good morning to my fellow ministers of the council, the members of the media, and indeed those that listening to the sound of my voice. Good morning. Of course, Monday, February 26th was election day and the people indeed have spoken. I wish to congratulate the people of St. Martin to, for demonstrating their democratic rights and heading to the polls as we were anticipating that there may have, could have been a low turnout, but it came out in the same range as uh, 2016, so which is encouraging. I also sincerely thank, of course, the person that put their trust in me, but most of all would like to congratulate the parliamentarians elect, including my colleague, Minister, Minister Lee, congratulations. So on one hand, of course, election day has come and gone and the work continues. And as I have stressed uh, many times on this podium, our jobs continue during this interim period as, and has been the guide through the critical recovery stage while we have to make sure that we secure the necessary repairs and the proper disaster management plans that have to be in place to prepare for the next hurricane season. So therefore, indeed, the work does not stop. And I will therefore also continue as your minister to continue that work because that was the mandate that was provided to the entire cabinet and therefore also with to me, and I will continue to work with the ministry to ensure that all preparations and safety uh, matters are taken care of as long as we are here in office. I will be indeed very brief today with some of the initiatives and uh, progress made. Uh, first of all, of course, in communicating with the Department of Education, it has been confirmed that there were indeed no reported issues with any of the schools. Uh, that were used as polling stations on Monday and that all schools indeed were able to resume their normal operations on Tuesday. I would therefore like to thank, to, uh, thank those that made sure that there was indeed minimal amount of interruption as possible because of course we were already affected with so many outages throughout the last couple of months. In addition, um, I would also like to use this podium to send out the reminder to teachers, administrative and management staff of schools for the upcoming information session uh, held with the General Pension Fund Thursday, March 1st from 3 until 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon. This session uh, has been organized especially for those interested in owning their own homes as APS will be given the opportunity to do a presentation on their housing project, a project designed especially for civil servants, and we shouldn't forget that indeed teachers are part of the civil servants core, and therefore a very critical group within our society that we have to service and that we have to secure. It is an excellent opportunity for qualified persons to make indeed and maybe take the next step towards home ownership and alleviate some of the pressure of having to continually pay even now higher rent costs, an issue that continues to be the cry of many at the schools and persons in the general community as well. And as I mentioned uh, uh, earlier, of course, we, we all have been informed that the teachers have indeed been neg negatively affected. 
it's my responsibility therefore as Minister of Education to secure the, the situation and their, uh, their well-being and housing has been expressed to be a very critical one. The session will be held at the Bel Air Community Center this Thursday and as seating indeed is limited, kindly you are requested to RSVP uh, it is encouraged and that can be sent to beverlymay.nisbet at sintmartengov.org. A reminder has also been sent to all school boards as well and uh, you are kindly therefore requested to, the school boards are requested to encourage and, and remind their teachers to use the opportunity. In addition to that, uh, on Friday past, February 23rd, a follow-up stakeholder session was held at the University of St. Martin. After weeks of individual meetings with these organizations, myself, cabinet, management of the, of the ministry, it was the right time for everyone to join together again and discuss where we now stood in relation to the ministry's resilience plan as approved. We were able to, of course, be informed by critical staff members, the Secretary General, about the progress with the, the World Bank, possibility for low-hanging, as we call them, low-hanging fruits and priority projects that will need secured funding, and that went uh, very well. Um, we also, of course, used uh, the, the, the meeting to be also encouraged by the the proactive nature of some of those stakeholders, including school boards. I've been encouraged by, for instance, the Seventh-day Adventist uh, school, by the Catholic school board, by MPC, by the library, because all those stakeholders have displayed proactive initiatives to secure their interests, such as the repairs, as some of these schools have been heavily damaged and affected. Of course, all these initiatives are and all these school boards and stakeholders have expressed that they will go the extra mile to secure their services, whether it's rendering schooling, education, or for instance, library services can be secured for the community at large. Uh, we were therefore able to, to discuss also the possibilities that we have outside the settlement of the insurance claim or indeed the, the, the funds available through the trust fund or the, the priority funds as some of these schools have expressed that uh, if indeed government is able to maybe pay some of those outstanding funds that we actually as government owe, they can go and stretch it further and even can secure some of their, their repa repairs before the availability of disbursement of insurance claims. And that's encouraging because I believe it is critical and very important that we show what we are able to do ourselves before, of course, seeking additional op opportunities through loans and the like. Um, in that sense, I'm also encouraged uh, and supported, as was emphasized by my other colleague, uh, Minister De Weaver, that it is indeed about partnership. And as I've expressed throughout the previous um, weeks, um, as Minister of Education, we indeed should recognize the responsibility that we have for the school environments and the safety of the school facilities. Um, and they are currently, of course, covered under one insurance policy, and we've seen the the sensitivity and the risk that is associated with that. Uh, I'm therefore uh, very um, satisfied and I can inform the media and through you also the listeners and, and those f further involved, such as the stakeholders and the schools, that we indeed will begin the discussions on the possibility of indeed this ministry's related institutions, such as the library, sport facilities and schools, to indeed retain their maybe their own insurance policy in the future. And that would be a break and a change of an existing practice that have been uh, in place over the last, let's say, two decades. Of course, it has been the norm for years and years that these institutions have all been covered under one big government insurance uh, umbrella, so to speak. And while that has its advantages resulting in, for instance, in lower premiums, we are now seeing the other side where the lengthy delays uh, we are indeed experiencing to disperse and to conclude the matters of the claim. I will therefore begin talks this week to seek any alternative options so that we can ensure that these type of events, such as last year hurricane and the establishment uh, of indeed the availability of claims and, and funds can move quicker in the interest of the safety and the repairs of schools or sports facilities or other institutions such as cultural organizations. I will keep you updated as these talks will progress and I will also of course ensure that the Minister of General Affairs and her staff 
and relevant departments are included in that process as we recognize the joint responsibilities in this matter. Now lastly, um, yeah, uh, on Friday the nomination period for the 2018 Culture Prize will start. I'm delighted and very happy with the, the partnership and the support of the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, my ministry. And the goal of this year's prize will be to acknowledge the innovative contribution of young persons in the local creative industries. As a Minister of Culture, I also recognize that the passing of Hurricane Irma has indeed created a greater need to stimulate St. Martin's cultural heritage, but also the opportunities of artists, the creatives, in the recovery, but also in the possibilities to further expand uh, and create economic opportunities and economic diversification. Young persons, therefore, between the ages of 15 and 24, will be encouraged to indeed submit and look out for the media and uh, announcements that will appear as of Friday. And I really would like to encourage those young persons to participate, especially those that have displayed and earned their progress in the, as, a, as a creative and as an, a young artist or with, and their aspirations. Look out, media, and you will be informed further. Yeah, well, that's basically that I, all that I have to say for today. I wish each and every one of you a pleasant day and also a pleasant week ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Weitzer, for your opening remarks. At this time, I invite the Minister of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, the Honorable Emma Lee, to address you. Good morning, uh, colleague ministers, media, those listening by radio, television, or internet. Um, you know, like the, like the other speakers before me, um, I'd like to thank the community for coming out to vote and exercising their democratic right. Um, I think it's so important for our country moving forward that people come out and, and um, use that right. Um, thank you to the many supporters as well and well-wishers. I've received a lot of messages and a lot of phone calls. The, the, out, the outpouring's been tremendous. Um, the work continues. Um, we did take a day off yesterday to recuperate, but um, the work continues um, as such. I'd like to report on uh, activities for the Ministry of VSA. Um, for the months of January and February, 250 inspections of food establishments were made, out of which seven kitchens were closed. Um, just for clarity, it is not the role of the Ministry of VSA to shut down business establishments. We don't have that authority. We can, however, shut down kitchens when certain um, anomalies are found. Understanding that the consequence of that very, mal will, very well may be that the establishment shuts down. What are they looking for? So for those of you who are in the food handling business, um, you know what to look out for. Signs of pest infestation. Um, prepared foods are un done so under unhygienic conditions. Um, no temperature control practices are applied. Improper method of defrosting foreign, uh, frozen foods. Uh, food handlers without food safety certificates, food handling certificates, um, and food handlers lacking personal hygiene and proper attire, and no proper cleaning program in place. So um, although things have been busy with elections, um, as I've always said, the ministry is an excellent ministry. The staff are proactive, and they're out there working while um, elections were taking place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Lee, for your opening remarks. At this time, I invite the Prime Minister and Minister of General Affairs, the Honorable Leona Romeo Marlin, to address you. A pleasant good morning. As Prime Minister, I would like to first thank the people of St. Martin for upholding the principles of democracy and going out and voting in an orderly manner. It continues our established tradition here on St. Martin of fair and nonviolent elections, a tradition that many around the world envy. Through this medium, I would also like to thank the persons that place their confidence in the party that I pr represent, and specifically my person. Once again, I am humbled by your unwavering support. 
congratulations indeed goes out to our minister, Emil Lee, who has made it into the parliament. I know you will do a great job when the moment and the time arrives. A special gratitude goes to Mr. Jason Rogers and his team of the Central Voting Bureau for the effort and work they have put into making the execution of the SNAP elections a success. The following departments and entities are also well deserving of praise and gratitude. The Parliament of St. Martin for providing the space so that the Central Voting Bureau can operate. The Civil Registry Department for their tirelessly efforts to ensure that everything was in place, even though it was challenging, but every election it is a tireless um, effort to plan and execute accordingly. So gratitude and, and praises goes out to them as well. The Department of Communication, DCOM, for their efforts in ensuring that everything that was needed to be broadcast was done such and in a timely manner. Vromi, for assisting for setting up the voting booths and taking them down to ensure that schools can be um, resume for the following day. I know that each time that is a tedious effort, but it was a job well done. The police of course, keeping order, the prison guards, VKS, that all falls under the Ministry of Justice. I'm very much in, um, glad for the assistance that was given and to ensure the safety of this building as well during elections. The international observers, the voting district staffers and members, I know at each election it's very tedious in getting things together and counting those ballots, but nevertheless, a job well done. Security staff and drivers, and I can't forget the fire department because we asked them to make sure that they control the, um, the area of the dump to ensure that there are no fires, just in case that that disturbs the whole election process for persons in the Melford Hazel area and in the town area as well. And to all who have made a positive contribution, a sincere thank you, thank you, and thank you. Moving forward, elections is now behind us, and we have to continue as long as we're here still. Today, February 28th, is one of the coldest days in the Netherlands, and I'm getting some feedback from the students, and I just want to take this moment to encourage them not to give up. This too shall pass. Um, it is expected that in the Netherlands it will be between negative 8 and negative 11 degrees in some areas. So that is pretty cold. It was very cold when we were there. And we knew that this week was going to be a very tedious week because it was going to be one of the coldest. So today sets a record, but we just want to encourage our students to um, keep thinking of St. Martin and keep thinking of that's the warm thoughts. And we're sending warm thoughts to them as well. But don't get discouraged. Moving forward, we have the, this week we, was, we continue talks on the structure of the, the project bureau that is going to be part of um, the World Bank projects that we're here doing here in St. Martin. Um, by the end of this week, the Legal Affairs Department and the Department of Interior Affairs and Kingdom Relations, Foreign Affairs, they are working on a draft national ordinance that should be ready at the end of this week to, for that establishment and legalizing the basis of the National Recovery Program Bureau. We will also be having a selection committee and um, besides that information, well, a whole package will be brought to the COM for approval so that we could set up something temporary to get things executed because, again, we have, um, as indicated before, we have a priority list. Those were the reasons why, as well, we went to the Netherlands to seek support and additional funding for, well, not, not additional funding, but um, funding to be dispersed immediately for cri um, critical projects to before hurricane starts. So that process will continue and we will keep the public updated as long as we can and for as long as we are here as this government until a new government is formed. I thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister Romeo Marlin, for your opening remarks. If you have just joined us, you are watching the Life Council of Ministers press briefing. We now go over to the question and answer session. The floor is open. Alita Singh of the Daily Herald, you have the floor. Good morning, uh, Prime Minister, Ministers of the Council. My question is to Minister Cornelius de Weaver in his capacity as Minister of TIAT. Uh, on Friday, I believe you announced uh, 
that the, you were looking into the lifting of the moratorium on supermarkets, and your hope was that more supermarkets would therefore decrease the price. Wouldn't it be better to ensure that our um, inspections are maybe amped up, ramped up, rather than adding more businesses to an already saturated market? Well, it's a combination of both. Um, the advice from the department was such, and we are busy reviewing it as well. But the inspections are ongoing, will continue to be ongoing. Any reports regarding price gouging are being investigated and being addressed. So those inspections will just have to continue, and we will continue addressing that. Thank you. Lyndon Brown of BC, BCN TV, you have the floor. Good morning to all the honorable ministers. Um, I have seen the progress of the people of St. Martin to the Minister of Justice, the emphasis of our local police officers. A lot of times you hear negative, but I have seen the advancement of our, during the election, that they have been honored and they have done their job properly. There's an ongoing class at the University of St. Martin, Minister of Justice. Do you have any idea how long this class will be continue? Because um, the advancement of our police officers is necessary. Thank you. I always believe in investing in our own. And if they're doing a job, we also want to give them the tools to be able to do the job. I, I need to mention that the surveillance cameras are being installed. Um, that's going to also help them do their job better. Again, I thank them as well for the job that they have done. As a matter of fact, on election day at 8 p.m., once the polls were closed, I visited the police station and spoke to Mr. Cal John and other officers there and thanked them for the work that they did and also to get an idea of if, if there were any incidents, and it was pretty much clear. Um, some may notice as well that the ban on alcohol was not there, and it really did not pose an issue. Um, even though it was something that people were used to doing, there was no real legal basis for it. Um, my time around, when I had the opportunity, since there's no legal basis for it, we did not do it, even though it was a customer doing it. Um, so I think it shows, again, the maturity of our people, and I want to congratulate them for that. I think, again, we are a beacon in the Caribbean and in the world, and we can have free and fair elections without incidents, and that's the way we need to continue going. Thank you. Andrew Dick of the Daily Herald, you have the floor. Uh, good morning to the ministers. Minister De Weaver, concerning the U.S. preclearance, um, I know we were working um, on it before Irma, then um, of course with the state of the airport now. Any update concerning that? We are actually we are actually planning a trip next week to the Punta Cana for the preclearance. While we're there, we're also going to make a couple other stops. And since I covered two ministries, we want to make sure that we kind of kill two or three birds with one stone. And that's going to happen next, uh, the week of, I believe, 9th to the 16th, if I'm not mistaken. The visit in Punta Cana itself will be on the 16th. And then we have a couple meetings before that as well. So that's all still on track. And we're looking to, again, because Punta Cana is the latest place that preclearance has been established, there are lessons that we can learn from there and make sure that whatever hurdles they had, that we overcome them quickly and avoid making any um, poor decisions. We now go on to the second round of questions. Alita Singh of the Daily Herald. Thank you again, Minister Michael Ferrier, on the status of the 2018 budget. Any updates? <coughs> Uh, yes, good morning. The um, 2018 budget is um, kind of stuck right now uh, in a uh, question with regards to Article 25 of uh, the financial um, fiscal uh, law, where um, a request has been sent to the um, ministry, the Kingdom Ministry uh, in Holland, to um, have us uh, waive the fact that we need to have a balanced budget. There seems to be an, uh, a difference of opinion in the uh, application of Article 25, and that is being worked out as we speak between the CFT and the uh, Reichsminister as we speak. 
Lyndon Brown, BCN TV, you have the floor. Minister Lee, good morning again. Um, I should say congratulations because food is necessary and good food. Um, how often would the inspectors um, inspecting the restaurant and all food handling um, establishment? Thank, thank you. Morning, Lyndon. Um, it, it is a constant task. The, the inspectorate doesn't stop with their, their food controls, their safety controls. Um, it just isn't that I always have the reports on hand to communicate that to the public. So um, those controls are necessary controls and they continue on an ongoing basis. Because recently there was um, establishment um, that they found worm in, in food which is, which is, 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 um, is unbearable. I, I couldn't comment on any specific incidents that you're referring to. I'm not aware of the, any incident, the one that you're speaking of. As I mentioned in my, in my report, um, a number of establishments were found to have deficiencies of significant enough nature that the, the kitchens were closed, right? So they also do inspections where they go out and they may find things, minor things, and then they give them a warning and they're given time to correct it. But these, were, these for example, were establishments that had significant enough concerns that the kitchens themselves were closed, right? Andrew Dick of the Daily Herald. I just wanted to get clarity. I have two questions. So one for the Minister of Education and one for... We'll do another round. Oh, you do another round. Okay, thanks. Um, Minister um, Waiter, um, concerning the um, bus policy, I know that the minister before... Uh, the school bus policy, sorry. Um, I know the minister before had um, a plan, you know, to cut down based on, of course, the budget um, that we use. Um, is there... Do you have the same sentiment when it comes to that? And also, um, any meetings very soon with um, any of the bus associations uh, for the schools? Good morning. Uh, yes, Mr. Dick. There is a meeting scheduled for next week <coughs> with the school bus uh, uh, association and uh, to discuss the progress, to exchange uh, the different views, some of the concerns that they have expressed throughout the process. Uh, of course, we always have to emphasize that uh, school bus transportation is a responsibility held by two ministries, Ministry of Transportation, <clears throat> and therefore the position that school bus transportation has under public transportation, as well as, of course, my ministry for the responsibility of the financial arrangements and agreements about how the manner um, that indeed safe school bus transportation can be and should be provided. Much have been said and discussed and prepared in the past. We definitely have advanced with some of the ideas, but I believe that where we kind of like failed or maybe uh, displayed flaws is continuous dialogue and conversations about and to indeed to explore where we have shared visions for a new style school bus transportation in which I would like to emphasize that I believe that school bus transportation is an intrinsic part of the educational system where we may view and see teachers as educators, of course. We also have to address that school bus transportation um, drivers um, are part of that safety and educative type of uh, value as well. And if we see them as such, uh, and uh, even uh, if we therefore, for instance, emphasize, emphasize that it's not only about um, transportation from and to school, uh, from home and to school, but it should also be about educating outside of the classroom and therefore engaging in a variety of, <coughs> of practical experiences, projects, visits to monuments, visits and participation in all kinds of sports programs. You're going to have a different type of conversation about the relevance of school bus transportation and its possibilities to, to, to partner in that element of doing more outdoor activities and therefore that, that, that indeed transportation should not only be seen in the light of from home to school and back but also in what type of role can they play towards the future. So I therefore would like to um, stress that I look forward to that first uh, uh, conversation. Um, in partnership with the ministry because they have progressed uh, with the first ideas moving forward. We need to discuss those type of ideas and also in consultation with the, the Ministry of uh, Economic Affairs to see how they would partner 
In this, uh, there were previous decisions uh, by the previ previous Council of Ministers. We have to see whether we can adhere to that or create a certain type of different um, ideology or shared vision. So I look forward to the conversation, and I will not further detail it until, of course, we have uh, reached a good sound mutual agreements of how we will tackle this process further to have effective um, uh, results, uh, not only budgetary, uh, but primarily in terms of how we see um, the entire school bus tra transportation system and its operators and its drivers to be a fundamental element of our educational system. Thank you. We now move on to the final round of questions. Alita Singh of the Daily Herald. Oh. Ms. Rhodes, I just wanted to add to this a little bit because before he comes back to me as Minister of TIAD, I want to declare the year. First of all, my grandfather had a, has a bus and is part of that. So in the Council of Ministers, I have excused myself as a minister as well as the interim minister of TIAD to avoid any potential conflicts of interest. I just want to make that clear so that this doesn't live a life of its own and that I have excused myself. So. Whatever Minister Wright has said is all news to me as well. Thank you. <laughs> Alita Singh of the Daily Herald. Thank you again. Uh, Minister Lee, prior to the polls on Monday, former Minister, uh, Prime Minister William Marlin had called on government to release the 12 container homes that he purchased while in office. Uh, can you give an update whether where those homes are at the moment, if government has received them, and uh, what is being done with the process? Um, yes, this actually is something that I believe falls under the Ministry of Vromi um, in that these are not um, containers that were consigned to or honestly really informed about to the Ministry of, of VSA. Based on that comment, some research was done and, uh, and I believe we found who was donating them. Um, but understand, these are really just basically from what I can see, pop-up containers. In other words, they ship flat. So when you open them up, they, it really is just four, four walls. There's no kitchens. There's no bathrooms inside. I think the idea of, of, of um, explaining that these are somehow emergency homes, these are containers. These, these are basically shipping containers that ship flat. Um, on that note, you know, Unfortunately, in the elections, you know, a lot of things get lost in all of the buzz around elections, and perhaps the media may have missed some of the discussions. Um, you know, we have put um, a contract in place with Dr. J Foundation, and uh, there's a small hotel that's currently being completely renovated. I mean, it's being gutted, all new um, uh, furniture, everything inside. Um, and that's been our solution from the Ministry of VSA to provide some sort of interim emergency housing um, because no emergency, no proper um, uh, plans were put in place for true emergency housing. Lyndon Brown, BCN TV, you have the floor. Minister Gittison, Minister of, of Fromi, I know that uh, this, the people of St. Martin comes first and uh, the government of St. Martin welcome other people. There have been an ongoing problem at the Mullet Bay Beach with um, a local businessman have occupied legally a plot of land from, from government and um, there are some conflict and confusion. Did it come to your at attention? Uh, did you heard anything about it? And what are you going to do about it? Good morning, Mr. Brown. Thanks for the question. I did hear about the situation that's going on in Mullet Bay, and I, we are um, handling it, but I cannot discuss right now with you the procedures that's ongoing. Thanks. Andrew Dake of the Daily Herald. Uh, yes, um, Minister of Vromi. Um, concerning the process of land given by the former Minister of um, Vromi, um, I know that um, you said you were going to look into you know, the legality of the whole situation. Any update um, concerning that? Uh, thanks again for the question, Mr. Dick. I cannot um, discuss any of the issues concerning that land because it's an ongoing investigation and we were told not to talk about it. 